good. Um, I've never been there. Airship? It's uh, my oh, recommendation, oh, yeah. actually. Getting if you ever you've never been to Craghammer? Uh, no. Okay. Airship. Clear, with that question, you've never been to Craghammer. Craghammer is inside of a mountain. Okay. Mm. Oh, so okay. airships not okay. exactly doable. Um, mm. gotcha. There's a, a lot of stairs, windy stairs to get up Oof. to the entranceways. Um, there, and then a lot of stairs going down into the mountain. So, oh. yeah. Um, airships are a no go. I would recommend horses until you get to the 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 base of mm-hmm. Craghammer, and then, uh, ironically, uh, if you could find some rideable goats, that probably work pretty well. Ooh, hmm. Goats. There are some oh. large goats that you can uh, procure from uh, stables at the uh, at the base of uh, of the mountains. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 a bit of a hike. Not gonna lie, not gonna lie to you. You got to go all the way past Kaimel and then north. There's no direct route, so past Kaimel. Past yeah. Kaimel. Yep. Well, around the Iron Set Ridge, the the little small bit of mountains right there, and then you head north along that uh, along that path, and then yeah, you're good to go. I mean, it's probably another two days journey from there, but yeah, you're good to go. Well, I think our bard's a really good uh, navigator. We'll just let him take the lead on this uh, this little journey here. Oh, okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I didn't. I didn't know that, Valdor. That's great. And he can't sing, so he's got to do something useful, right? Dick. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, what? You, could, know, you got any um <clears throat> any packable food for the road to, for your for your favorite for your favorite group? Um. I can, get some, pot pies. I can get you some. Yeah, the pot pies don't travel that well, boys. Um, let me uh, let me see. I probably have some uh, some pastries and some loaves of bread for you. I can I can I can. That would be oh, Jatana, you're amazing. You quick. That's great. Just give me a we second, you. boys. She uh, she goes in the back and she comes back out with a uh, a big like hempen sack um, with uh, with various loaves and muffins and things like that various uh carbs basically to keep your energy up and uh yeah that's about it this is generous we are forever thankful we will put them to good use if lloyd doesn't yeah, we'll eat them hell yeah there they will hopefully treat you better than they're treating the table in the back so uh good luck boys and um we'll we'll see you when you get back i i i hope i'm i'm, I'm hopeful for good news Right on. We are as hopeful as you are, Jatana. Lloyd finishes his morning beer and uh, exits, ready to go. Well, you could just Maybe say beer. Two morning beers. There's you really two morning beers. You know, you could just say beer because back then you didn't drink water. Water I mean, was you worse might've. than beer. Back when, well, where? <laughs> <laughs> right. So the questions. Right. So you are off to Craghammer. Craghammer. The hammer Crag of Hama, The Hammer <clears throat> of Crags. So we must acquire some horses. So obviously we're taking an airship. We're good. Um, that's the plan. Yeah, if you spot me, yeah, that'd be great. So I yeah, e- soon. I don't know if that can Do apply. we have horses? Didn't we already have I feel like we had horses at one point. Uh, what? I don't know when you would have had horses. Uh, that would be a, a yeah. That would be. When uh, would you have had horses? Uh, I don't think we've had. Fine. That'd be another thing you must speak of. Well, you know, you can hope that the DM will give you horses for free sometimes. You know. Uh, uh, you, a... got, you get a lot of shit for free in this campaign. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, does does uh, Detana have uh, horses we can take? She does not. She runs an inn, not a stable. Okay, but there's probably a stable connected to the end, right? Because uh, people bring their horses to the end, you know. It's but yeah, she yeah she doesn't have horses on tap though, man. She's got beers. We can <laughs> steal the horses from somebody else though. I mean, so where is the like nearest stable? stable? Yes, stability, the stability. Stability. I don't think that's quite the uh, quite it's the very correct. stable. Yes, yes, stability. Um, ironically, that's the name of the stable. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the stability. 
it's uh it's it's in the outer district uh right outside uh, basically you head out head out of the town uh down to the eastern side down towards the main road that's going to take you towards Kaimel. uh there are a number of different stables and things like that uh that you have uh, that you can select from so uh you have your your fair choice of what uh what options you would like so what are you looking for from a from a horse you're just looking for strong strong stock uh yes definitely gentle eyes yeah gentle Wait, what eyes are you doing with that horse you don't need to know okay fair fair um you can do what know. you want with your horse i guess i'll get a horse uh, steve's you know Ooh. fat ass is going to be in front of me i guess i'd rather be on a horse instead too and all right Cornelius isn't looking for like you know the big horse you know normal he's horse. looking for the a little guy average horse maybe just looking for a regular color like, you know standard yeah, horse material standard horse horse riding it's enough like, for a, a little dude you know so enough for a little dude leads to a little horse nice and how, cheaper how, how but doesn't you, travel uh, as far uh, or as quickly yeah i was sure. about that True, true. So, I mean, you're talking like pony, you know, kind of a Shetland, if you will. Um, <laughs> they're so cute, though. They are. They're they're adorable, cheap, but their legs though. are about as long as as Ben's. Right. So, like, it's <laughs> not quite the standard riding horse style if you're looking for a gallop. True. I do want to keep up with my full size friends. So, well, um, why don't you just get on a horse? Yeah, can you hop on a horse with one of us, guys? Yeah, I mean, what's the, the weight we're folks, talking here? Handle one. You're like, I mean, let's what, put it this way: so Vondel, Vondel's not really that big, I guess. So we might be able to no, share. Who's Vondel? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, Vondel. Who the fuck Vondel. is? Vondel. Vondel. The fuck is uh, <laughs> it's a legend I've heard about before. Nice yeah, legend. legend. Lloyd is very interested in meeting this Vondel character that I've never heard of. Fuck you, good asshole. That's Valdor made right? a song of Vondel at some point. Oh, I will now just to be a dick. <laughs> I'm also working Valandor on Valandor play- sharing a horse. Yes, Valandor. Ooh, will be are sharing you guys going to share? Oh, how sweet. Yes. Well, really, because I have a lot of money and I know I can get a good fucking horse. So fuck you. <laughs> yeah, money bags over there. Money bags. <clears throat> All right. So, yep. Standard horse, horse for Floyd. So. so you, you go up to, uh, I should pick a random stable, and there's uh, there happens to be a a nicer looking one. Um, Valandor is like, I'm spending the money. I'm gonna pick a nice horse. So there's a nicer looking stable uh, a little bit further in from the uh, you know as you get closer and closer to the walls, kind of like the it, it's it's not as not as nice stuff. So you're you're kind of getting nicer as you go in um, further into the town, but. Um, you come up and and you see a a set of eight horses that you have to choose from. A um, couple browns, couple uh, um, you know gray and uh, multicolored I'm brindle. I'm, miss, I'm I'm mixing up the name a little bit, but uh, you know various various types of of horses, all about regular size. Um, seem like they could probably uh, probably take you pretty well. And, and a, uh, a human male sees you balding uh longer hair um mustache comes out and and says ah, i see your eye on these horses are you interested in uh interested in procuring some yes we are yeah we okay. just need some good horses for a couple of days uh um, rental or 30 mounts not really sure do well, we let rent me tell or you buy? my stock here is phenomenal uh, you uh, hopefully will be renting them and bringing them back, but uh, if that's if not, point. that's what that's what some of the cost is for. Uh, you put some down payment in, um, in the in the sense of you bring them back, you get all of it back. Um, but gotcha. if not, then uh, then yes. Uh, so each one of these cost uh, seventy five gold pieces, and it, when you return them, you get thirty five back. Oh, okay. That's uh, really me. yeah. It's that's gonna be a problem bad. for for Broadus. <clears throat> yeah, Broadus, I will front you the money. Oh, hang on. <clears throat> what? You don't have any gold? 
Yeah, what you got? No, I've got 40, 41 gold pieces. Oh shit! You you so, bought that fly sword, didn't you? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You bought yeah, one. and then we like found one later on. Saying, yeah, that's what happens when you buy shit. That's yeah. life. Well, oh, yeah. I mean, I can French you. Uh, no problem, man. I got plenty of money. So, listen here. Cornelius, I'm going to be just... sharing with Valendor, so I can help you with your cost. How's that sound? Brought us. Are you guys going to share amount? Yeah, Cornelius and okay. I. I was going to let Cornelius pick what horse he wanted. Yeah, we'll Virginia take this one here that yeah. has such pretty colors and gentle eyes. Oh, pretty colors. I'll take that beautiful brown one in the back. That poo, you mean? Um, brought us attempts to negotiate um, with the stable master um, because of his lack of means. He's looking for a horse, and he has a little bit of an idea uh, about animals. Um, and so he's saying, is there anyone, any <clears throat> of these horses that uh, you might um, be willing to have a, a lesser rate on? And if so, would you point them out to me? And uh, Brian, my, my ask of you, is that if I could try and do some sort of a check to find um, if I feel like a horse would be able to like keep up and it might be an older horse. Um, if, make a if uh, make, make, is willing to do so. so. Make, make make a persuasion check. It's going to be somewhat high because you did have this entire conversation in front of him about your friends. <laughs> running the money on your behalf what? so he no. knows it's possible so so go ahead and roll. I'm, not, I'm, not, table talk. I'm not i'm not gonna it's, it's a shop talk right, I mean, right. I think Make it's a roll. i'm not gonna say i'm not gonna say it's disadvantage because there may be a horse okay. he wants to get rid of but i'm just gonna say roll a persuasion okay. check how's that okay. okay that's solid that's solid that's uh it says, almost well uh well i recognize that um I may be able to get full price out of you. I do believe that, um, yeah, I think old Jimmy would fit you just fine. <laughs> he goes in the back, <laughs> and uh, and old he comes Jimmy. back out, and he Jimmy brings Doofit. out what is what is actually a a rather large donkey, <laughs> and <laughs> it, it it's the same size as a horse, and it looks pretty stocky. But he uh, he he does uh, bay a little bit, and and <laughs> as he comes out, and he's like, uh, "I'll give you Jimmy, and there's no need to to bring him back at all if you don't want it." But uh, twenty gold for old Jimmy. Oh, poor Jimmy! Oh my god! Let's um, go, Jimmy! All right. <laughs> all right, all right. Here's the thing: like this is just this is me just saying it. I want Jimmy to live, and Jimmy's gonna be our Jimmy from now on. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy's yeah. going everywhere with right. us. <laughs> so, so, uh, Brian, Just so I can make that uh, noise all the time. <laughs> since you did bring up earlier that there's oh. different, or different size, size horses, and this being a completely different... Um, it's a freak of a donkey. A, yeah. horse, a horse of a different color. Um, is this going to be able to keep up speed? Assuming that we're not going to be galloping all the way there. I don't think a donkey can necessarily gallop. Would this, not, let's uh, not, uh, no, let's our, not discount Jimmy. I mean, okay. Yeah. You don't know what you genetic know abnormality Jimmy. is yeah. here. You're going to be working in Look, our favor. You guys here. think that Jimmy's all fine and great <laughs> now before we get no. Jimmy, but once we get <laughs> Jimmy and we run into some problems, I don't want to have what's your fingers pointed at me. No, I won't. Back, no, yeah. I mean, I'm gonna... Jimmy. Look, I'm gonna I say this. See where Jimmy takes us, you know. Cornelius and I will head. Well, like we'll be in the rear to make sure Jimmy lives because I'm I'm invested in Jimmy already. Okay, uh, so we are very invested. I'm in already Jimmy. invested in <laughs> Jimmy. Seems like a useful tool. <laughs> Jimmy's gonna be the mascot of this campaign, so Jimmy's gotta live. All right, Jimmy, it is. Jimmy is. Uh, uh, make uh, so as as 
the oh, stable no, hand. Add a value to range. <laughs> make it make an animal handling check for me. <laughs> oh boy, who gets to oh, do God. that? <laughs> who gets to do that? Oh All God, do we all get to do it? <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> do me. How do you do this? <laughs> Give me a roll. That's funny. Jimmy, oh, I'm God. such a good start with Jimmy. <laughs> Uh, he hands you the reins, and Jimmy doesn't fucking budge at all. He just he stands there, and you've already handed your gold over. BT Dubs had to take it out, but Jimmy oh, just yeah. you like you like turn around and you you grab the reins. It's just like moving a wall because he is he is a good sized donkey. Like he he's gonna be he's gonna be fine. He's gonna keep up, you know, all that sort of stuff. Not a problem. But he is stubborn. And he's stubborn as a mule. <laughs> No. So Cornelius walks up between <laughs> uh, Broadus and Jimmy, seeing that there was a bit of initial resistance between the two, and creates a handful of flowers, hands them to Broadus. Go ahead, Broadus. Uh, see if he likes flowers. Eat him. Thanks. I think this. Donkey. Gonna need everything we get it. So. I just, I just so, fucking I, see, I see, <laughs> see Broadus as Napoleon Dynamite chucking fucking casserole at the llama. Like, Come get your dinner, Jimmy. Get your ham, Tina. Come get your ham. <laughs> <laughs> Tina, oh, it's fuck. time for dinner. Yeah, so Broadus, um, feeling defeated, uh, Offers over these flowers to to Jimmy, uh, the donkey, and says, "Hey, fella, make and, a uh, make, make make a persuasion check with with. I'll give you with advantage since you are uh, since you've gotten some assistance with well. Thank God for advantage." Nope, never mind. I mean, thirteen's better than You're, eight. Thirteen's better. Thirteen's hey, you 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 use your your twenty proficiency to get Jimmy. So, uh, thir- thirteen is better. Um, Jimmy just kind of glances away, and he kind of like stands like he's trying to look regal, and he just keeps glancing down at the uh, at the flowers, and he kind of moves his nose down there, and his little prehensile lips just kind of. Pluck the flower, the petals off of the off the flowers out of your mouth, and All right. Well, I would like to lay one hand on Jimmy as a last ditch effort. So this is the only thing I've got is a hail mary. Uh, uh, just, um, as a, as a soothing touch, basically. Steve walks over to uh to um what's his name? I've, I've already laid hands. God damn! I'm gonna give you guidance, motherfucker. Yeah, don't worry about it. It's just it's, it's, it's a donkey. You're, you're healing. You're healing. You're putting a point of, of healing back into Jimmy. All right. Trying to trying to heal yeah. in some way. All right. All right. I see, I see what you're doing. Do do an animal handling. You might need guidance, Steve. By the way. So go ahead. Now, would you do an animal handling check one more time, uh, with with advantage this time, and you'll have guidance if if Steve allows it. That's an extra D four, right? Uh, yeah. And. Rolling. In order for our relationship to start off right, take all the time you need, bud. Um, there you go. Manage, you said. Yep. Go ahead and roll so her again. One more. Animal handling. Nope. <coughs> there we oh, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus, a, plus a D4. <coughs> there it is. Plus a D4 in there. 21. Hey-o. There you go. Four on a D4. Jimmy likes the hands. There you go. Jimmy, uh, Jimmy looks down at you and kind of nuzzles your hand as you as you go and go and pet his uh pet his nose so um oh, Jimmy. the uh the the uh <laughs> stable master says oh look there he's he's he loves you already took uh took a bit of time but uh you made the ass happy so that's that's <laughs> great that's great the rest of you the rest of you now you got horses right yep <clears throat> all right so it'll be seventy-five gold pieces for uh, the rest of you. How many? How many are you looking to uh, looking to buy? Uh, me and uh, Cornelius will be riding a horse together. <clears throat> uh, yeah. 
Yeah. So that's that'll be seventy five uh, from one year. Uh, yep, I will go ahead and pay that. <clears throat> okay. He will be writing himself paying for Are you going to take it out, Brian, or drop me too? Yeah, it's one thirteen nineteen. I think is what you come up with, right? Huh? Is that or is it one thirteen oh nine? Is that right? Or thirteen oh nine? Yeah, thirteen oh nine is where I'd be at. Yep. There you go. Sweet. All right, Lloyd, you're getting your own. I guess. I don't like these things, but I'll ride it. Oh, He's shit. suddenly paying for it, you cheap motherfucker. I'm not complaining about paying for it. I'm complaining about the horse. Difference. You're cheap. All right. And Steve, you got yours? <clears throat> yes, sir. All right. Doing the math. I am not math conscious today. You didn't t- do math today, is that what you said? I'm I'm not I'm not conscious enough to do math today. So I have my calculator <clears> up, <throat> But I do that when I am conscious. So All right. Anything. All right. For me. Yep, there you go. We got gotcha. you. All right. Do you need any uh hay or anything or does that come with the um the bargain? It comes with the fee. Comes with All the right. fee. Good. Um he hands you a uh, a sack of he said what where, where are you off to? You off to um you told him Crag Hammer earlier. Is right. uh, let me go get the uh, let me go get the feed for you. He comes back with uh, several sacks that he just he loads up um, at the at the uh, along the back of the the horse at the base of the saddle. So you have a couple sacks of sacks of grain for them, um, each of them, and you're uh, you're good to go. He says now it's about a uh, you know how to get there, boys. Is that right? Uh, why don't you point us? Okay, you're gonna head straight out this this door here, uh, the massive door of, uh, out of Amon. Head straight east until you reach the uh, the small set of mountains to your right. Then you take a left and head north, and then you're gonna head straight into the mountains. Uh, at that point in time, the horses may need to be walked up. Craghammer is. Uh, primarily stairs all the way up to the entrance and then uh on the way into the mountain uh they have some stables on the outside you can uh, you can you can keep them there so you can dock the horses there um at the at the base of the mountain or walk them up and dock them at the uh, at the top either one um but you um you won't be able to take them into craghammer itself but yes there is uh there's a couple thousand steps you have to go up. Ugh. Can't wait. Do you have a map? Um, I do not. But um, let me let me let me see what I can do. Okay. I like map. I like map. Map good. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, he goes into the back and he. Finds a map for you. Sweet. I have to find the map and I have to save it for you. I mean, we're in Iman's, right? I didn't know Iman's was plural, but yes. Iman. That's how big Iman. it is. <laughs> I'm a dick. Through the Gulches of Gagatha. I don't know why the, I don't have a map actually saved into this joint, but I don't. What about the old map, man? Yeah. I mean, the one that I, we... do, I do have the old map. It's been a while. I just don't remember it. I don't remember the Alabaster Yeah, well, they're up in the north, <clears throat> the east, Alabaster or wherever. Alabaster. Somebody had to say it. Yep. Uh, I'm not bringing this motherfucker back. Okay, fine. I got it. I got it. I'll fucking share it. Um, fucking piece of shit. This Sorry, dumbass no, doesn't know how to spell the the Sorry. fucking word alabaster. It's pretty great, though. All right, let me just share this shit. I tried to share it and it didn't work. Hmm, so I feel like there I you scre- screenshot it at one point. Ah, indeed. But a great, pretty fucking map if it weren't for that dipshit, whoever made it. (laughs) Aller Master. (laughs) Uh, It's good stuff.
I see it. The Hammer of Crag. It is north of us. We must go through the Torian Forest. I mean, if you want to skip through, I mean, the horses are going to have some problems with the Torian Forest, but, uh, and then crossing the river. But, um, that is faster. So the, um, uh, Stable Master does tell you it's about a two day drive, or two day drive, two day ride. Um, this to, normal to Crag Hammer, okay. um, from Iman. So, uh, primarily going by the by the roads. We got to get across the river, right? So, is there a concern related to that going outside of the normal travel channels? I mean, outside of you know having to, well, to cross the some... Oregon Trail. Yeah, God damn, there's a risk going across the river. Fucking let's right, do dysentery it. everywhere. Let's let's yeah. let's go the 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 most like ridiculous route that's like straight to the hammer of Craig. So you're still it's still probably going to take two days because you're off horseback once you reach the forest. Fine. Um, so Some you of us go. are on donkeys also. It's true. It's true. The donkeys are a little little uh, not quite as sure footed as the as the horses. But really? uh, might, Jimmy, yeah, he might Jimmy. just decide that he doesn't want to go across the them. It's true. Fucking Jimmy. Yep. No, right, whatever. Whatever route is best for our friend Jimmy, then I guess we shall go. That would be uh, the Silvercut Roadway, all the way to the crossroads there, and then you take the Wildwood Byway up to the uh, the base of the Cliff Keep Mountains, and then you have the the trek up the stairs <clears throat> towards Craghammer. Ooh, love the stairs. All right, I guess the horses the and Jimmy might not, but uh, it is the. The stable master tells you it is more expensive for a stable at the base of Craghammer than it is at the actual city itself. Would you say that, um, like, the steps may require some climbing equipment to be, you know, safest? Um, the steps themselves are about. Uh, Don't be or is it pretty yes. steppy it? and not so climby? It's it's very steppy, um, not okay. very climby, uh, but it. it's very windy and very many. Right. Um, so it would probably be single file for you, except for you two. And he points to Valandor and Cornelius says, you two could probably walk side by side. Woo! But uh, it was originally made as a, a difficult to get to place by people. Um, it, it, more of a defensive mechanism type of a thing. Only two dwarves could stand shoulder to shoulder walking up the stairs, and they're windy, so you can't exactly get Normandy in there, that type of thing. So it's it very effective from a defensive mechanism, uh, very inefficient from an economic perspective. So, um, sure. yeah. So mm -hmm. you could probably walk single file with the horses and good old Jimmy, and uh, except for the two of you, you, you could probably fit next to each other. All right. Well, uh, two days, right? Okay. We'll uh, we'll see you in uh, five ish days, maybe. Well, we don't actually know. Do we really know how long we're gonna be here? Well, I mean, it's hey, two we... days there and then two right? days back. So right, seeing him in five days means we only spend a day there, which is probably the math not enough is time. terrible. Right. Hey, e e either way, boys. Like Double at weeks. the end of the Double day. Weeks. Maybe. At the end of the day, here's mm -hmm. here's a note. Bring this back to me. It's got my signature on it. This indicates that you visited me and that you this is the you know the receipt of our transaction. You bring it back, cool. it indicates obviously that you get uh your gold back. Right. Sounds good. Thirty five gold. Indeed. Each? Excellent. Each. Or just twenty five gold for each uh, horse. Yes. Okay, I was just, right. just asking. I was I was confused. Okay. If we wanted to anymore. buy the horse and keep the horse, is seventy five the normal rate? Or is that you know Yeah, if you never come back, I have your seventy five gold. I got that. Okay. Oh, that's fair. We'll see. Wait, I, 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 I might, might be able to find a time to you. You're, much, you're worth much never, more gold to me. Never know what you're gonna run into on the road sometimes. What what'd you say, Matt? I didn't hear. That's I said you you would be willing to take Jimmy back? Thanks. If I brought him back? Oh uh, no, that is a that is a finder's fee that you that you paid there. Right. A finder's fee. Jimmy's for Jimmy? all yours. Yeah, it's just me and Jimmy. We own Jimmy now. Jimmy's life is ours. Jimmy, goodbye. 
It's a pleasure knowing you, Jimmy. Or is our lives Jimmy's? That's the question. I mean, he might have a high um, intelligence score. We'll find out. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, does Jimmy, if, since now I slash we own Jimmy, um, can he be like sort of a pack mule? Like, can he carry things for us? Well, he can yeah. after we get done. You got to ride him, right? Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, just, yeah. I'm just saying I mean, that. Um, yeah, he, he, can, he can carry quite a bit. Yes. Yes. I wish we had a druid. All right. Let's... You wish we had a what? We'll druid. see how he does on the steps. I mean, we don't have to worry about him. You know? No, but it'd be great to have him later on if we need to, like, move. Some well, I mean, Jimmy is ours, so we already around. have them, him later. And now, well, unless we lose Jimmy, oh, we're not huh. losing Jimmy. I mean, we'll try not to. Jimmy, right? is, so. Jimmy is this campaign's bag of holding so far. <laughs> he's, he's just going to be like that. Yes. that, that picture of a donkey that just has like eight feet of shit on its back that's just like mm-hmm. loaded up. <laughs> yeah. Do we I have feel like a, it, uh, nobody ride, got a lot of pressure yeah, on after, it now. So after Jimmy gets us where we need to go, ain't nobody riding Jimmy after that. He's True. He's going to be carrying shit. For yeah, Jimmy's our carrying guy. Do we have uh, packs for Jimmy? Yeah, what we you got what? You have what for Jimmy? Packs? Yeah, like, you know, you throw a... Sherpa like a, packs? Yeah, like a little, like, you throw it over mm-hmm. them and things. Yeah, the, the horses come with saddles? Does Jimmy come with a saddle? Yeah, they, have, they, they, got, they, got, they got set up properly. So, um, at least... At this point in time, yes, they have saddles, saddle bags, and things like that. Like that's more on you all to to manage. But you got, you got you got you got some saddles. Does uh, Jimmy become another character in the spreadsheet that we can manage from an inventory perspective? He does not. He does Come not. On, man, he does not as of right not, now. Not or? tonight. Yeah, exactly. Right. Not yeah, tonight. Yeah. There, there's, just there's thinking sh- about his utility. Up, okay. Just like, yeah, there's shit that comes up. It's just like, yeah, yeah I, yeah, I don't yeah, have yeah, this shit ready. How would you yeah. describe Jimmy's flavor, taste-wise, if we were to, you know? Well, if it comes him. to that, it comes to that. Jimmy right. is 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 very, you know. He, is he stringy looking, or he's pretty stringy looking? I mean, he's right, he's see. a he's a big ass donkey. He's as big as right. a horse. He's a big ass donkey. So. Gets, let's see if let's see if Jimmy gets us there, and then we'll maybe start talking about investment for Jimmy later on. And decide whether you want to eat him or not. Well, or. Buying saddlebags, or can we just get like, going, or what? We, yeah, let's just let's just go. We're we're hitting the road, but we're real hesitant because you know we're lazy. So I don't know why we're so. We need to go. No, we just hitting. need to ask every single question, or I do at least. Hitting the road, hitting the road. All right. Yep, hopping on the horse. Taking, hopping on the horse. And it the is Jimmy. Silver Creek or whatever. Giddy up. Yep. So Creek Crossroads is where you're going to. You're looking for the the Wildwood Byway heading to the north. So you're on your way. Um, you out, outside of Amon, you all start off at a pretty strong gallop. Uh, brought us you and Jimmy. Uh, kind of, you know, he kicks a couple times as you're uh, as you're trying to get him to catch up to everybody else, but he eventually does uh, get into his own kind of a gallop. I guess you could call it that. Uh, but he keeps pace. He keeps pace pretty well. Um, as you go through the day, you kind of get the, the, the horses and yourselves a rest. Um, it's certainly not very comfortable um, riding horseback the, uh, the the entire way. You do have saddles, but it's still kind of wearing. Um, but you do pull into uh, you know, pull in so much as you come to a a crossroads where uh, multiple roads meet, and um, it's about. By the time you get there, it's about 6 p.m. You left that day probably about 10 in the morning, um, and it's about 6 p.m. ish now as you uh, as you reach this place, uh, this this intersection. So you have a couple options. You could uh, keep keep going a little bit further. Um, or uh, you could stay the night here. You do know that you are somewhat north of uh, the city of Kaimal. Um, you could head south to Kaimal for uh, about an um, hour or so to catch it and then stay there for the night. Or um, you know, a couple different uh, 
couple different options. Um, I don't know. We do we have the hut now in our arsenal, uh, Cornelius? Are you a hutter, hut man? That's not. Well, not that would be me. That strong? No, we're not hut not ready. Yeah. Okay. As a, as a hut preferred group, we do we want to find us accommodations? No. We used to before. What did we do before we had the hut? I mean, we uh, sleep out in the wild and yeah, do what we did. And right, and owl bears. That is what we did. I am <laughs> totally good at that. Thanks to owl bears. Kill totally, baby totally owl bears. Awful, awful we things to well, Let's owl. do it again. <laughs> let's not forget where we came from. Come on, let's okay. let's not talk about that. We not be soft. In that damn we'll, hut. we'll get off and find a nice cozy stretch of pine straw to. Maybe to bed down for the evening the and time. maybe have a nice fire and, you know, hear a song from our bard, perhaps. I don't know. Play some dragon chess. Somebody can figure out. How to play. <clears throat> That's the first time you want a song. Doesn't count. I mean, I'm allowed to make requests. That's all I know. You can deny them if you want. So. Right. Yeah, let's... Uh... Find a place to to hunker down. Usually, people who deny like nice requests are kind of dicks. So, but it's fine. Let's uh, let's uh, let's have us a campfire, and uh, I guess we'll do watches for sleep, right? So that's generally the this the plan. The mm-hmm. Steve will take first raw. First watch. Who's with him? Hello? Not. I think you right. had your answer. That was what it was. We got five people, so three watches, right? Or is it just two watches? No, three watches. Uh, we'll do three watches. Cornelius and I will take, uh, take a watch. Yeah, absolutely. You guys are horse buddies. You might as well be watch buddies. I mean, might as well. Yeah, and then uh, brought us to do a solo third watch. All right, I guess uh, Lloyd will hang out with Steve. Okay, sounds good. First, do we want to have a yeah. solo watch. I think, I think the Is first, I think, I think the Hopefully first man. watch. I must should have be hit the, my button. Yeah. So, so uh, first watch should be solo. Steve and Lloyd first. Yeah, Stephen Lloyd first. Well, hang on, hang on. If okay. we're doing, if we're having a single person watch, then they either should go first or yeah, I mean, um, they can go first. We can well, go last. I, I, I think safety wise, it makes the most sense. It's all good, bud. Okay, that's fine. I can go first. Or it's just one person having to get up early versus two people have to get up. Yeah, early. that's what I'm gonna say. It's either first or we're last. We're thinking well, about sleep, you know. So, well, it, let's go I last. So what we'll do is. We'll extend, um, we'll do, so how many hours are we going to sleep? Ten? No, we're going to sleep eight. It's a uh, two, two <clears throat> hour, no, yeah, no, it's, well, yeah, nine, you... nine hours, three hours per watch, right? No, what we, then two. what we do is we do four, four, hours, and then right. one for the last watch. Does that make sense? No, that's terrible. Well, no. Well, so I guess first... the better question would be, Brian, is this considered, like, a, a long rest, or can we defer this, a long rest? Because, like, the last this group that goes, rest. Burke, would get and four hours of up, and then one hour of sleep and have to get up. That doesn't make do any a sense. a long rest later. What do you mean? No, they wouldn't. Yeah, they would. The last watch is one hour, you said, right? <clears throat> yeah, but you sleep but, for the so, first four hours. And yeah, then you okay. wake so, up. And you're up yeah. for the last four hours, and then you get one hour of sleep, then you gotta get up. Middle watch would suck ass. Yeah, middle watch sucks, but you all get a you all get a a full rest if regardless of whatever watch you take. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah I know. Fine. Well, the, it would the, suck. I guess my second. point is, yeah, we don't need a full rest, so can we defer that long rest to? Oh, um, so uh, you uh, would all have a point of exhaustion, mm, at right? That point that's the problem. Which has. If you okay. don't take, if you don't sleep through the night, you have yeah, exactly. You're disadvantaged on yeah, you gotta get skill sleep. checks. Yep. Um, nope. And if you if you yep. get too yeah, many exhaustion points, you die. So yeah, that's yeah, bad. Let's not do that. All right, why don't we do three three hour watches, Burko, and that gives everybody you know at least six hours of sleep, right? 
Okay. That works. I mean, I would just want to make sure that the last watch doesn't have, like the last watch is a little bit shorter. Yes, it kind of sucks, but you have to understand that if it's one person, they don't have someone else to bounce ideas off of. I don't know. I mean, six hours seems pretty reasonable. Three, three, and three. Three, three, and three. All right. <laughs> so it is Steve and Lloyd first for the first watch, correct? Yeah. Yep. Here we are. All right. So why don't you all make some perception checks as you are out in the open near this crossroads. I like it. What could go wrong? Nothing. What could go wrong? Sorry. I disregard the two 13. perceptions. All right. So we're looking at 11. Okay. Yeah. And 16. 16. All right. You're all, uh, you know, everybody's starting to bed down and you kind of look around. It's, it's pretty quiet. Um, not exactly a busy busy time of day but uh you do notice there's a lot of grooves in the road from various carts and things like that that have made it through so it is a busy intersection but not quite a busy time of day so pretty low key your your watch goes by pretty much without a hitch um if there's nothing either of you would like to do we can go on to watch number dose uh no i i don't think i need anything so I will just go ahead and wake the next two up and go to bed. During the watch, Steve inspects his new, um, the craftsmanship on his new um, crossbow, his mini mini crossbow, and um, and checks all the bolts and the uh, the workings and stuff. He's you know he's good with metal and everything, so he looks at options of pieces that he might want to fabricate new new bits for, um, and makes makes little mental mental notes of. Of you know new pieces that he can uh, make repairs on. Yeah, for sure. You 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 noted as, as you're looking through, you're looking for uh, any sort of imperfections and things like that. But Jackson's uh, you know his craftsmanship and his armory is is he 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 didn't he didn't oversell himself more or less. He did a pretty darn good job. Uh, there are some tweaks here and there that you could uh, potentially add a little bit more of your own flair to it. But uh, overall, it is a fine piece of uh, piece of work there. All right. All right, get up, you fuckers. It's your turn. I'm going to bed. Get up, get up, you fuckers. <laughs> I mean, I love you. I love you. Steve goes and, gen- and gently wakes up Valendor as opposed to Lloyd <laughs> kicking... Uh, um, <clears throat> oh, oh, oh! It's that time already. Oh, thank you. What the I was fuck? Definitely not kicking Cornelius. Valendor was the one receiving the kicks. Um, <laughs> let's let's be fair. Hey, you second shifters! It fucking sucks. Have fun. Get up! Get up! You bitches! There's nothing going on. I'm nothing, going to bed. Nothing to report, but we weren't. <clears throat> we didn't. Well, the, I mean, we didn't have the greatest. This guy time. fondled his like crossbow for the last like 45 minutes. It's kind of gross. I'm going to go to bed now. Yep. Well, Lloyd just pops down and immediately starts snoring. All right. Oh, so, wow. two of you. Some perception <clears throat> checks from the both of you, please. Oh. All right, you uh, you have just woken out of your slumber. Only a couple of hours that you've had uh, asleep, um, just enough to kind of be like, "Son of a bitch, it's so late. What the fuck?" Um, you don't you don't notice anything besides the howl of some wolves in the uh in the the thicket not too far from you you hear you know it seems like a a, a call of a couple different packs of wolves that are uh, that are calling out in the distance but nothing that's close enough to cause you a threat um so you don't you don't notice much of anything happening all right um while we're sitting there i'm just uh messing around with transmutation stuff so like see a flower blossom and kind of fade away pick up like little little pine cones from the ground and sprout 
tiny little tree and like, give it to Valandor. Ooh. Hey, Valandor, uh, where'd you learn how to play? Oh, I appreciate the flowers. Yeah, I uh, learned to play at um, just a normal like bar with all my friends and my family. You know, I wish it was something cool. I went to a bard college, but it wasn't it wasn't where I really fit in, I guess. I love the wandering, wandering side of, of life. So I've just kind of honed it through listening to others play and, you know, just thinking what makes me happy. It's kind of weird, but, you know, it works. I think it works great. It's amazing. <clears throat> what brought you to where you are? Because, I mean, I love, I love this flower. This is super cool. Um, really what brought me to where I am is just a love of things like mm. this magic. Mm. I've like always it. been, um, fascinated with it. It's really called to me across all the places that I've been. And even now, sitting at a fire, watching, there's magic right here. What? That is really cool. <clears throat> I love magic too. Burke, just FYI, you sound really far away from your mic. Yeah, sorry. <clears throat> I was clearing my throat and I didn't want everyone to hear, so. He's whispering to his new friend. It's not a big deal. It's just. No, I'm working. <laughs> so I'm cheating for songwriting <laughs> and I'm using chat GDP to help me. So that's what I'm actually doing. <laughs> That's <laughs> fucking awesome. You'd be surprised. Like so 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 yeah, so, no, so, so I got I got a little verse. I'm not really gonna sing it very well, but I got a little verse that I've got going on from chat GDP. Um Jimmy and Bratis, friends through thick and thin, stubborn as mirror oh, let their journey begin. Ears pointed <laughs> forward, but hearing not so keen in the vast green meadows, their bond is serene. <laughs> Bard at work here. Uh, not bad. Uh, that definitely sounds bardic, bardically inspired. I'm just saying, like, like I'm using, like I'm writing all, like I've got all this stuff that I keep typing into here. It's amazing what it does. So I'm, I'm not making a song. I'm literally typing it in here, and it's giving me like all the fuel I need. I love this. And then all I just have to do is strum a little tune to go with it. Little, little Jimmy, who will someday know, make I'm us ready. a great greasy sandwich. Good old, good old Jimmy. I mean, it gets even better when you go down further. <laughs> I love this. You know, it's you know, Jimmy and Bratis, mules forever true, stubborn and hard of hearing, <laughs> yet friendship grew <laughs> oh, <laughs> through fields of laughter <laughs> under the sun's endeavor. They're forever friends and nothing can sever. <laughs> Oh, so sweet. Oh. That, that is that is incredibly. <laughs> that is so Does awesome. Jimmy vomit rainbows? Because he should. He doesn't, but uh, his eyes saying. often look in different directions. <laughs> Chat <laughs> GDP is on fire with Jimmy and Bratis right now. Like it's on uh, fire. Sorry, I'm is... just telling you, it's fire. <laughs> bad it's real bad like that was like that's the uh, chorus of it of the song i mean i've got a bridge i've got my verse two i've got it all like it's it's legit it mm, thank so you Chad GPT. <laughs> and then and then as my outro <laughs> this is what it says so here's to chimmy <laughs> and Bratis, a duo so grand in their word in their world of silence they firmly stand through stubbornness and camaraderie they persevere friends forever their bond crystal clear oh ho, ho. <laughs> All right. So, so okay. good. Yeah, I, I can't eat Jimmy at this point. That's what I'm saying. You can't. I mean, I've got songs about Jimmy now. I know. You've pretty much solidified that. that it's, Dude, I'm bought into Jimmy. I'm just letting you know. I, uh, I'm really? on the fence. Uh, Lloyd's not an animal, so he might have to kill Jimmy someday. We'll see. Well, whenever <laughs> Broadus hears this tune, <laughs> he, he might think differently. But as of right now, the, the recap next time awesome. will only be Jimmy. Uh, that is a possibility. So on this uh, track, we, have uh, we still have at least one more rest to to perform, I believe, right? Yep. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Or one more uh, watch, I should say. Sleep well, Valandor. <laughs> Sleep well, Cornelius. Do indeed. 
and now we gently, right. we, I, do, I gently wake up Bratis. And then kind of run away because I'm scared of him. <laughs> hey, Bratis. You Bratis. just wait until tomorrow. You're going to just love it. You and Jimmy are going to have a, a good date. watch. Bratis is automatically, like, annoyed. <laughs> Brought us, uh, wakes up, unfortunately, he realizes it's by, he's by himself and, uh, everybody else is now asleep. He looks over, Jimmy's asleep, standing up, leaning up against a tree. (laughs) And, uh, it's time for you to make your perception check. Um, before I make a perception check, uh, Mm -hmm. I want you to know that I was studying my um, dragon chessboard. Okay. Okay. I like it. Eighteen. So while you're setting up your dragon chessboard, um, you uh, you open this box and pull it out, and it is this this again as we learned last session. Dragon Chess is a 3D planar uh, chess board. You set up the pieces appropriately. Um, You're intently looking at all the different pieces and gathering somewhat of what your your memory holds. And um, Matt, I'm going to ask you to jump into the Destiny 2 voice channel chat. Oh shit, son! Oh, oh shit, hit the fan! Man, we we uh we got some time to ourselves now, gents. Let's uh... go! Come on, this is <laughs> Chat GDP is killing it right now. I'm just saying. Oh, uh, it's dumb. I know. I've seen some. I fucking shit love around. it. <laughs> I like it too. I'm a big fan. <clears throat> I started using it like a month ago for some random shit, and um, it's pretty fun. I mean, I've got I've got some on Steve. I've got some for Cornelius. I've got Lord, Lloyd the D Bag. It's actually a song, by the way, in case you want to know. <laughs> Hold on, now he didn't earn that. He, uh, he did. I don't know yes. about that. I feel like Lloyd has always been helpful. Always been helpful. Person, then maybe I don't know a little annoyed one, so. by our here, bard. Here we go. Here we go. Lloyd, Lloyd the D Bag. Yeah. In the Shire So Green, where the hobbits play, there's a legend named Lloyd, a hungry elf. In his own way, with pointy ears and a heart so merry, always on the lookout for a feast to carry. <laughs> hey, what's what, what, yeah? Lloyd the but, Hobbit um, elf with a stomach so grand, meat in his hand in the Shire he'll stand, always hungry with a mischievous grin. In the words of hobbits, he's ready to begin. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is a very misunderstood representation of, of Lloyd. What, what are you talking where, about? I don't know where it even derives from in the, the nature of our uh, our adventure so far. Uh, this was when you were talking about how good or uh, how much you love Mead and how much you hated me singing. So I, I made a song about you being a douche. I don't remember saying that I hated you singing. It's more that I just <clears throat> have not heard you do much of that as yes. a self-proclaimed. That's why bar. That's so. why I, I uh, made you a hobbit <laughs> instead of an actual elf. <laughs> I, I, I think that's uh, taking the rudeness too far, sir. Yeah, you're a hobbit, you dumbass. <laughs> <clears throat> I also have Steve because I just can't stand the way it's spelled. And that's oh, like, and, and that's it's like Steve with a with a dumb name. Uh, I mean, granted, a mine no- is a similar <laughs> method. I mean, I'm not right? gonna deny, but but mine has like actual usage. Like if 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 we ever do any like you know actual discussion of our backgrounds and shit, I just don't know them there yet. You know? Well, like this is how this one starts. In a town so quaint, where the gossip flows, there's a character named Steve, and everyone knows. <laughs> with a dumb name, he wears it like a crown. Always speaking out of turn, never backing down. <laughs> Did GPT come up with that? Yes. Because it's on. It's spot on. I mean, it's like, I mean, that's why I'm like, you know, I'm feeling so, like my representation is not, you know, very well done. Like, you could do well, better. So, I mean, so, I expect a I better mean, song I, for my Lloyd. I will eventually get a better song for Lloyd. That was the first iteration of it. I think I, I understand one that first, actually. Um. <clears throat> 
I mean, I'm not going to deny Lloyd has his, oh, uh, in has the city his uh, idiocies. So. Okay, in the city streets where the tales are spun, there's a legend about Lloyd and a moment undone. Lost in thought in a crowd stance, or in a crowded stance, Lloyd couldn't resist and he peed his pants. <laughs> That's possible. All of that. It's very possible. Oh, oh, Lloyd, oh, Lloyd, in a wet surprise, a little mishap under the city skies. In, a la- in the laughter and the rain, he takes a chance, a quirky dance with a wetter stance. <laughs> you know, I had to get out of the bar. It was the and best you did way to pee your it. pants. So, so. And I might have fallen asleep a little bit and tinkled a little bit. These are all possible things. They are, but I'm just I'm not going to admit to them in, you know, broad daylight, I guess. Yes, but just to know that your bard is literally typing furiously in chat G- GPT to come uh, up with amazing songs. Well, you know, um, once you get your ukulele back out of, uh, you know, um, being fixed from the mechanic, you know, you can grace us with some of these uh, these songs that you've created. So. Well, so my plan is, you know, when I have <laughs> free time, I'm going to try recording some of these with, with uh, music behind and then just hit the buttons to play whenever I need bardic inspiration. I like oh, my it. God. That's, That's my good. plan. I finally got it back from Hayden and I just tuned it, so... I mean, I wouldn't be a proper uh, Lloyd if I wasn't busting my Bard Balls characters. You know? No, I know that, but, there's, but I, I wouldn't be a proper Bard if I didn't try to make a song out of it. And I'm not, I'm semi-creative, mm-hmm. but chat, I know. chat I know. GPD, when I type it into once, I'm just like, yep, done. I mean, uh, our previous Bard was also hesitant to be um, sing, sing, singishly. That's why he was a percussionist, you know, so... Right. Oh yeah, I'm not afraid of that part. I just have to find the. I just have. We just have to be in the right time. I haven't done any bard inspirations or anything. So, the drummer never has to <clears> sing. <throat> he can smoke cigarettes until the day he dies. I mean, it's just the beauty of it. That's true. Usually, why drummers don't last very long either. So. Mm. That's a fact. Although, what's his name? He's like the last surviving Beatle, right now, isn't he? Ringo? The drummer? Ringo? Yeah, I think Ringo He's is. He's still out there. Paul McCartney is still alive. Oh. Is he? He's, I mean, yeah, Very is he? So. I mean, you don't look too alive when you see pictures of him, you know. You off to uh, Vegas again, Gomes? Uh, in a couple of weeks, yeah. Gotcha. Well, that's gonna be fun. I mean, he loves all, it there. It's all work. It's have you gone to the dome? Favorite place. I have not been in the sphere yet. Oh. I I want to. So I was thinking about our long weekend for D and D group, and Vegas was an idea because it's kind of cheap. Maybe I don't know if it's cheap anymore, but it's still you know, cheap. might be cheaper compared to. And you know, we don't have to do Vegasy things. We can do cool stuff stuff in Vegas or something. You, know, you don't There's have to fucking do yeah. right. And, and maybe yeah, kind of a cheap long weekend would be good. Maybe depending on yeah. I don't. What long weekend were you thinking? I don't fucking know. That's he didn't okay. have a date. He just wants to do something. Oh, okay. Yeah, just making yeah. suggestion and then see what works out for people. So, yeah, I've got it's, it's the hardest for everyone that's on the East Coast, right? Because of the, that's you know, true. It's the, the longest. Flights. Yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, it's the easy other for thought, me, it's an hour flight, but <clears throat> yeah, I know. I was thinking the other thing we could do is go to back to uh, Virginia and get like a cabin or something like we did the first time. So I thought that was pretty good. What's that? <laughs> I'm playing a fishing trip with my dad in you know, for Upper Minnesota in Canada, which will be fun. You got you got to do that in like June or something, right? Yeah, we are. We're actually going to go um, tail end of June. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, I was kind of leaning our trip towards like September, October, maybe, but I wasn't sure what everybody else's year looked like. So, if we were going to do something, you know. Mm-hmm. It's all whatever. Be nice, though. We can hear those tunes in person, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) I know, right? B-Dog said he's kind of out this year, right? Yeah, he did. Uh, No, he said he could do a long weekend. He said he couldn't do a trip like we did 
last year. I thought that's what Brian said. Like, you could do, like, maybe a longer weekend, like a day or two extra, maybe. Mm. I think that's what he said. I mean, if you can't do something this year, we can always plan for what next year looks like. Mm-hmm. True. And make it something, you know, January decent. This year, so. planning for January, like, I mean, I agree. It would be it would be nice to I mean, if we'd been coming late this year, something. I mean, yeah, I was thinking like Labor Day weekend would be. You could build around a holiday if if you wanted to. I Labor guess. Day's not a bad idea. That's. I don't know. Cool. It's, it's a day off for most people. Yeah. It'd be gross for like maybe for travel, but as long as there's not bad weather, which probably wouldn't be any at that time of year. Yeah, Labor usually has fantastic weather. I mean, it's usually just warm. It's been a while for the whatever the boys are doing. We'll never find out, or we'll find out. It's one or the other, brother. We'll we'll know when it's time. <clears throat> right. <laughs> He's probably seeing some shit, evidently. I mean, I I'm jealous more than anything, personally. So, because whatever sure conversation is happening please. between please. our communal animal and Broadus right now, like we don't know. Yeah, I really want. We'll like, I really know. care about what's happening to the donkey. Yeah, okay. I mean, Jimmy and Broadus may be a true thing after well, tonight. Wagers so. on who who tries to fuck Jimmy. Oh no, whoa, it's not whoa, our whoa, thing. Whoa, okay, whoa. I mean, okay, wow, that was kind of that's kind of even line. occur to me. Yep, no thought of that. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Looks like it wasn't out of somebody's head. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't know why that's why not did, a thing. Why did that take so long for you to? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Now it's in everyone's head. Oh no, no it's, it's never still, been in it's my head. Still not at all. The it's whole still time, not in my head. never even entered, even when it was suggested as an idea. It's like nope, it's there now. It was immediately rejected from the vault. It made me forget what I was going to Google. So that's that's how good it was. Mission accomplished. There we go. Hey, gents. Oh, hey there. Oh, hey. Is Broadus hey. alive? Broadus, are you alive? Broadus? I took a little look at the chat. There you are. Broadus, your um, watch goes by without much impact. And um, the daylight comes and shines. We're we're back at it. Ooh, I'm so refreshed. Ooh, yeah, so refreshed. Jimmy, you feel good. Jimmy is feel good. Snoring throughout my whole watch. What? what Sorry was that? about that. Jimmy was snoring throughout the whole watch. Mine. Good Did you old Jimmy. <laughs> is that healthy for that kind of man? She noticed that the oh, tree that Jimmy is tied talking. up to. The tree that like is tied right. up to. What was that? My young, you're choppy. And my ear all choppy for me. Let me try and rejoin. Hold on. Yeah. How's that? Is that better? Not better. Check, check, check. Sweet. Just check, check. Yep. Syllabus. Syllabus. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Mm-hmm. Are we all here? The human torch was denied a bangler here. One, two, one, two. Check or check. Um. So you actually find that Jimmy, like throughout the night, has been like errantly kicking off pieces of bark of the uh, the tree that he's tied to. <laughs> like, he's just, like, just, like, kicking pieces of bark uh, off in, in the middle of his sleep. So, uh, yeah, Jimmy... Uh, Jimmy's doing all right. He's doing okay for himself right now. All right. All right, it's daylight, and it is time to head north to Kraghama. Or wherever the hell else you want to go, if you want to head north, okay. Okay. that was the plan at least. But it's um, up to you guys. I don't think we have a reason to detour. So, I don't think we do either. And there's nothing interesting in between here and Craghammer, so we might as well go to Craghammer. Let's go. Like yeah. West. I mean, do we want to take a five. look at? Um, do we want to take a look at the list of our things we're supposed to find for our, you know Gilmore's and see if there's anything? Like we can do between then and there to find those things, or 
Well, the list of things Gilmore wanted was like pretty basic big things. Well, yeah, I guess some of it was, yeah. All right, we'll just head north, and if we run across those things, we'll run across them. So. What else did What else did he want? Some news on Dunamancy, and then go yeah. to the v- Visa Isle. The Visa Isles the- for the Basilisk. Okay, so it's yeah, not I mean, some. So yeah, it's anything regarding Dunamancy, a single scale from a golden dragon or more, <clears throat> and then the. Um, and the Dunamancy was what wild mount? Is that where we have to go for that? That was the lead, yeah. Okay, we're not well, going to be he heading wants in that a stone direction. Stone gland from a basilisk. Okay, so yeah, like there's literally nothing we can look. At. It's not like I need like an herb on the side of the road. All right, yeah. fine. Wild mount is literally the Asia to America, so yeah. it's a different yeah. continent entirely. Yeah, good yeah. noodles. And so is Can't where wild mount is. It. Yeah, it's not like I can just yeah. walk over and be like, "Oh, hey, wild mount, how are you?" All right, all right, all right. No, no yeah. teleportation. Got it. Head north. I do remember. I mean, when I was you guys can't Google. teleport for shit, anyways. But like, I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah, sure there's a teleportation on. option. But just like you're like level <sighs> four for Christ's sake. I don't. Yeah, that ain't I had me. enough trouble remembering trees before, anyways. So yeah. Right. Right. Correct. So, all right. You head on north to to Zikraghama. It, it is a is a full day's day's trek. You you do happen to uh, ride over a a tall bridge as you do cross a a river on your way up. But you shortly arrive at a small mountain town at the base of the Cliff Keep Mountains um, as you ride up towards Craghammer. Um, very small town. Uh, again, snow uh, snow has started to fall. As you reach the base, um, it is a quaint little cozy place where um, stables abound, a couple different inns, and um, just kind of like the entrance way towards the stairs up to Craghammer. Um, you do find as you as you enter this this small encampment, not really a town at all. Encampment is probably a better way to say it. Um, primarily want run by by dwarven individuals and um it is a uh stop off area more or less well uh, i suppose the decision here is walking with horses or finding some goats <clears throat> all right the goats I forgot about them we can't exactly trade our horses for the goats, but um, I mean, if we stable them. They'll trade them back yeah. when we're done. Mm. No, I mean we got the stairs. I mean I kind of like my horse, so so no goats. I mean we're at the we bottom. Can we can stable them. Yeah, we can stable them at the bottom. Just want to hoof it. Right, right, regular. Well, I mean, hoof? So, the, no. so the thing is, we either hoof it with horses we pull, or we hoof it without horses we pull. Well, yeah, we're just going to leave the horses here, obviously. Well, no, we can um, either leave them at the bottom or at the top. Yeah, I just don't know that taking horses up the stairs is the best idea, given how he said we'd have to talk, walk like single file and shit, and horses right. are a lot bigger than humans, so maybe to leaving the horses behind is the smarter plan. Yeah, let's stable Does that it. seem fair? <clears throat> yeah, so we had... We're it at cost us, I guess. Probably guess it's like... Yeah. Let's All right. Three gold, three gold a night. We're, can we find some stables at the base here? There are plenty of stables that you can right. find. Uh, at the base. So that means that there's, you know, yeah, a lot of people do this shit. So. Is there yes. one that has stables and goats? Yeah, trade, maybe. Uh. Um, not necessarily trade, but... Um, like there is, there there are a number of stables that you can go to and um, and ask for, you know, to 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 keep your keep your horse there. And as you walk through, you notice that like you could there there are some decent sized uh, goats, which is really weird, like like longhorn ram type style, but like very large. Mm-hmm. Um, that could probably easily fit, uh, you know, a Lloyd. Um, or a Steve, um, easily 
Valandor and uh, and and Cornelius, you could both fit on your own smaller goats as well. But you come to find that you know that's more or less like if you don't want to walk up the thousands of steps up the mountain itself, like that's what the goats are for. If you want to walk yourself, it's fucking free. But um, the goats are there for leisure, and if you do not want to walk up yourself. How much are the goats? Great question. The goats, um, they are 15 gold apiece. From a speed perspective, is there any advantage to the goats or not? Is it all the same pace? Uh, you could make it up in about half the time. Um, okay. Walking up, you know, thousands of steps, you're, it's, it's, you don't comprehend that at the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it is, you're literally walking up. It is an easier walk up the side of a mountain than a normal right. climb without stairs is basically the, the concept. <laughs> so the, the goats do help quite a bit. Um, energy wise, on energy yep. wise. Correct. I see. Uh, 15 I mean, gold, a, you say 15 gold, a little guy. So I'm willing to pay for yeah. goats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get, let's do some uh, goats. Let's stable the horses so. and get some goats. Yep. Goats, I guess. The More horses, uh, three, you, you go to the plus, place that's got, uh, we got what about, us. what about, are we going to take our, 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 our buddy here though? And He's going to be stable. It'll be fine. We're stable on the oh. horses and Jimmy. Oh, um, I mean, is that what Broadus's decision, though? Right, it's Broadus's goal. He gets to that's true. He gets to sound out. Sure, sure, sure. It is. Uh, What do I get to decide? (laughs) (laughs) I thought thought Jimmy was a done deal. I I didn't think I had any. I I mean, he's yours, so you're either stabling him or or bringing him. No, I thought we're like Jimmy East World, like team at this point. Yeah, right, I mean he's right. stabled. We'll come back for him. <laughs> yeah, right, right. We'll stable him because we don't. I don't think Jimmy can make it up them stairs. All right, Jimmy's old. He can't go into town either. Yeah, so there's no point. So Jimmy's got to be stabled either here or up on the top of the mountain. I think Jimmy'd be better off here. All right, all right. <clears throat> Lloyd's plan to push him off the mountain is now has to be changed. Yes, got it. Protus is is weighing um, the idea of slaughtering jimmy and figuring out how much food we could get out of that and how heavy that would be to carry it up the mountain and he decides that it would just be too much work to try and <clears throat> take all that meat up there so is uh he, is Brada saying this out loud or just in his head he's uh oh of course he's saying it in his head but he's he has decided that uh yeah it's probably best to a stable Jimmy. Well, no, I'm just I'm, I'm just asking because I I can't respond if it's in your head. So stable and Jimmy is <clears throat> I guess the plan. Just want to make sure. Just want to make sure. All right, we all have goats. Fifteen gold apiece, I guess. Yep, sounds good. We'll leave. Go ahead and go leave him. All right. Take my money, DM. You uh you swap the animals in your current possession for some new animals in your possession and i'm going to take 15 gold from each of you uh we'll share again but you can take the 15 from me we should have asked like jutana for a stipend or something for this trip you know i mean we don't have to make money we'll find out does bradis have enough gold yes for 15 yeah he's fine I mean, if not, if you ask him, I don't know what he's, he'd say. He's going to be at the bottom of his gold pool, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, Protus is exactly where he doesn't want to be with um, money, but... Well, I mean, I'm just saying, he, like, you know, knowing like, this, as as a friend, no, 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 I'd no, like no, to no, say... No, 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 Protus doesn't want... Um, he might stab you, actually. No, Protus, I don't want to... Yeah, no, I'm, no, no, I'm not going to give you gold. I'm Protus not that is, nice is of a, a bar. hard one... Yeah, Bradus is a hard one to uh, accept any sort of charity. No, this isn't charity. I was just going to tell you that I know you're short on gold. If you want me to uh, buy Jimmy from you, I will. That way we don't lose him. No. You already wrote a song about me and Jimmy. 
You don't know about the song. Jimmy probably has yeah. multiple songs by now from the but pace Matt start bar Jim, that's been going. Jimmy, about the song, so Jimmy therefore yeah, yeah. Matt <laughs> going to make the decision for Broadus that he's going to stable Jimmy and he's going to pay for it. I'm just saying, I got like Jimmy's my guy. Okay, I know. I know yeah. Valandor's in Val, Valandor loves Jimmy already, and he's only known Jimmy for like two days. And Super yeah. creepy. All right, let's get our goats. All right, you got your goats. <clears throat> and goat time. And uh, ironically, Broadus, you're you're um, astute at dealing with goats after having dealt with Jimmy for two days. Um, they're they're only slightly less stubborn than Jimmy is. <laughs> um, so you uh, you jump on top of this uh, this long horned uh, goat. <laughs> And it, uh, you just kind of spur it in the side, and it kind of gets up, and it gets, uh, gets going up the, up the stairs. You hear the clop, 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 clop of these things just rocking it up these stairs, and it is completely single file for you as you approach, um, as you as you begin to walk up the stairs, um, it is completely walled in, as though it has been carved into the top into the side of this mountain. So as the, the stable hand in Amon told you, this was for defensive purposes. Like the, the means of getting into crag hammer, you wanted to get into crag hammer. Like you had a lot of effort getting into crag hammer. They didn't want to make it easy. And they certainly as fuck did not make it easy to get into there. Um, these steps winded, Probably twice the distance that it would actually take to get to Craghammer was made in wines th- uh, all around in a serpentine fashion, um, all the way up. And when you get up there, um, at various points, the the steep cliff walls that surround you, it's very claustrophobic. Um, the stairs are probably 20 feet below the top of the cliff face. So it is. It is meant to not be very easily traversable uh, outside of the steps. And insanely claustrophobic. Like if if one of these things fell down on you, you the whole thing would collapse on top of you. Is the feeling of it. Um, every now and then there would be a, a relief of some sort that you would see a a sculpture of a a dwarven lord of some sort with a a flame in a in a basin. Um, kind of lighting your way as the further you go up um, the walls continue to rise and it gets darker and darker inside even though you are outside very little light comes into this this out al- this alcove that you're walking through um, until finally you are at the top after what feels like an eternity on the back of these goats. And they ride much rougher than a horse. Like these things are meant to be climbing mountains, not to be ridden. Um, It is a much rougher ride for these things. A lot more bouncing, a lot more um, discomfort. But finally you get to the top and these reliefs of dwarves that you saw that you passed periodically as you went, um, you see lined suddenly towering over you and lined along this massive walkway towards these two enormous iron doors that as you walk up have guards standing in front of them four guard four dwarven guards to each door and you walk up to them and these doors are enormous literally into the side of the top of the mountain these things are carved um, and you walk, you approach them. You all ride your goats up, um, and approach them. And they say, "What well, state your business with Craghammer? We're here to try your best ales." <clears throat> Man, make a persuasion check. <laughs> yeah, we are. We're going to Firebrook. He's not wrong, actually. I, I want to see it. I want to see the persuasion check from Cornelius. Oh, he's persuasive as shit. Okay, not, bad, not, not too bad. shabby, maybe. The uh, the um, 
the dwarves, as you first approached, were relatively stern in their expression. But as you approached on goats, walking to this this very kind of regal hall, like a very... <laughs> like, you felt incredibly diminutive. You're the smallest one of the group. You smell, felt even smaller walking up to this group of uh, already small humanoids themselves. And you say, we want to get blitzed, basically. <laughs> one one of the eight just kind of... Just kind of snickers. <laughs> And the one that, that stated to you, you know, state your business, looks over, takes his takes his uh, uh, his pike and just smacks him in the stomach, and Ooh. says, "Open the fucking door!" <laughs> and the guy the guy who snickered just runs off and pulls starts pulling this uh, this wheel with with hand, and you see the door slowly open up. And, uh, you know, the intent is to keep people out. That is very difficult to let people in as well. So, uh, the- nod <laughs> to the guy that's on the wheel as we. Thanks, bro. Yeah, he's he's struggling. <laughs> and every single time is it is an effort to pull these these levers down to be able to open the door. But he takes an opportunity to pull one down and take his left hand and just give you a little salute and then keeps <laughs> pulling. And, uh, as you, salute, as eh? you walk on through and as you walk on through, it is, uh, you are, you're greeted by a mass of torch light. As obviously at this point in time, you see these massive iron doors slowly creak open the dust from the bottom, uh, where it's rubbing against the ground is just kicking up all over the place. Um, making this, this, uh, stone-like fog kind of envelop everything even though it happens all the time here um it it still it still is as though these doors have not been opened in quite some time and you go through and all of the lighter torchlight it's as though um you know the, the sun doesn't exist and you are in a cave you are in a mountain right now but it is a well-lit highly populated mountain and so you come in and there is um not a lot of music, but the sudden burst of like what sounds like a pan flute coupled with uh, with something uh, like, like a string instrument of some sort kind of catches you off guard, considering the uh, the air of what you just walked through to get there. Um, so you go through the doors and you hear this, and you're you're caught off guard, but it's it's more of a jovial caught off guard. You 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 and you're happy of the surprise. It's, it's a happy surprise. Um, and you come in and as you approach the base of the mountain, you saw all these different stables, um, at the top of the mountain, there are an equal amount of stables. And what you didn't notice before is that each of the stables at the base had a color associated with them. So, not necessarily a flag, but a a a cloth that was laid over the sides of the goat that you were getting on. Up here are the equivalent of those colors with each of the stables that are up here. And so you ascertain that, okay, wait, my goat has blue and gold. I'm going to go over to the stable. And you, you wander over to the stable. And they say, Aye, good to see you. We'll take your goats for you. And they take your goats for you. And uh, right. they hold on to so them for you. I get my 15 oh. gold back. Is that how that works? <clears throat> uh, you can you can have your 10 gold back and walk your asses back down the thousands of stairs if you'd like. <laughs> or you could take the goats back down when you're ready to go. Mm. Love that I mean, second option. I appreciate you <laughs> taking care of them. We'll be on our way, sir. Aye. We'll see you whenever you're ready. And they uh, they get you oh, a good. quick a quick receipt. They write it up real quick, and they slap you a uh, um, a quick parchment um, with a name, a date, and the uh, the location for the goat that you will be got it receiving. Goat receipt, keeping it. <clears throat> got it. There you go. So you are now at the top of Craghammer, and you have never been here before. So, as you as you enter this place, um, 
It is a massive stronghold that is... You walk in and you look down and it is... You're literally looking down into the core of the mountain itself and you see rings of areas where there is life, where there is activity, um, whether it's commerce, whether it's business, whether it's whatever, but there are rings on the core of this mountain where life is happening. And um, yeah, you, you're, you're in this beautifully dark, torch-lit city that is the strangest thing that you have seen in quite some time in any of your lives. Lloyd um, kind of looks at his, coll- you know, his, his compatriots and says, so we did remember to ask Jatana where we're expected to go, right? That is a thing that we did before we left. Everybody yes. got that? Yes. Firebrook <clears throat> Brew. Yep. All right. Firebrook right. Brew, baby. In. Firebreak Inn. Look for Allie is her name. Yep, yep. She goes by Allie, and I'm assuming that's for friends. So we're hoping we get into that, or it's uh, Valerie, correct? Var Allen or Var Allen? Var Allen is Var her Allen. is her actual name. Um, I'm putting it into chat right now. See, Var Lloyd Allen knew all her. that. He's just Very testing good. you. Just testing. Absolutely, absolutely. So. Uh, Alan, and she goes by Allie. Yes. So uh, um, you're standing there, looking over the the edge of this uh, this rock wall into this like what feels like a forever chasm, um, but obviously has a bottom at some point. And uh, suddenly behind you, you hear a voice. Oh, it's quite a sight, isn't it? Oh, well, sure is. You turn around. And there's okay. a uh, there's a dwarven male behind you. One eye missing uh, has uh, has brown, primarily brown hair, but gray uh, gray streaks throughout it. A uh, couple. You can't you can't really tell, but you're pretty sure he's missing some teeth just because of how thick his mustache and beard are. But he says, "I lived here most of my life. This is a uh, hell of a sight. Hell of a sight." Always nice to uh, always nice to to see new people come into Kragama. Ah, so you uh, obvious. you're a local, I take. I've been here. I been here most of my life. Uh, yes, it's, it's it's quite nice. It's it's uh, beautiful. Is it? Yeah. I I I believe so. It is. What's your name? Didn't get your name. My name is Alan. Alan. All right, Alan. Um, these guys have some questions they'd like to ask you because they don't know where we're going. <laughs> no. <clears throat> Thanks. We're looking for the fire bro- fire brook in. Fire break in. Fire break in. Fire uh, fire fire brook. Yeah, the fire brook. Ah, yeah. fire brook in. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Thank you. This uh, hey, I I this is a good place. Uh, let me let me show you to it. And uh, he uh, he leads you to he he yeah. beckons you to follow him, and he kind of yeah. kind of. Alan, I how, how far of a walk is it? Uh, it's a bit of a hike. You've never been to Kragama before, have you? I this sorry, is the first time, yeah. I sorry, I yeah. I so uh, not as far as if you were trying to uh, to get some work here. Uh, we're going to the top slab. Going to the top slab, so uh, it's it's just down the the stairs here. Uh, you notice stairs are a bit of a motif here, but um, yes, we're going to the top slab. It's just down the stairs here, and uh, we'll we'll need to walk around a little bit to get there. But uh, trust me, <clears throat> you'll know it when you see it. So I hand him a gold, and I just say, point out any cool things along the way. As we go, and if it has something to do with, uh, you know, anything that's arcane or magic, even better. He uh, he looks at you. He he grabs the uh, grabs the gold that you toss his way. Takes a good bite in it. Looks at it. And says, 
Oi. I gotcha. I gotcha. Ooh. And he uh he he walks keeps on keeps on walking. Um he uh he peels he's he, he shows you about a couple different areas. He shows you where uh, in the top slab the uh the standard this is this is kind of the commerce section of the uh of the the site. Um it's also called the arch. It's the entry level to the city. Like it's where the visitors come. It's where the inns are, the uh the pubs are, you know, kind of the um the nicer area of uh like commercial of, district, I guess. You could call it that, correct, yeah. Um it's um what you see a lot of non dwarves coming here and walking around, uh, which is somewhat surprising considering it's a dwarven city. Um, he tells you uh, that this is where a lot of the, the, the visitors, the vacationers come and go. If they're, if they're going to come to Craig hammer, the, the top slab is the arch as it's called is, is where they tend to go. Um, he does tell you that the center slab is more for the Crag Hammer regulars, uh, especially the nobility and the um, the higher caste of individuals within Crag Hammer live in the center slab, also known as the heart. Um, and then he also describes that the bottom slab, so it's separated into three different sections: the top, center, and bottom. The bottom slab is also known as the pit. It is the industrial powerhouse of the of the city. Um, boasts the the most forges per square mile of any location in Taldurai. So uh, it is something he is quite proud of himself, as he uh, he worked for the Bronze Grip Metalworks Group for a majority of his career until he uh, he was injured and had to retire. And he kind of points to his eye and says, "I it's a." Uh, uh, they paid me quite well. I worked for them for many years. They paid me quite well for my injury, and now I just uh, I enjoy the city itself. Very noble. Ooh. That's amazing. Pretty good deal. Yeah. Yeah. I. I. So, and uh, at about this time, he uh, he points out is the fire brook, and he he, uh, he waves you on. Uh, kind of bows a little bit and and gives you a gesture with his hand towards a uh, a a wooden sign that says Firebrook Inn and has a flame billowing from the bottom, uh, kind of taking up the bottom of a uh, of the of the wooden sign, uh, while two tankers of ale kind of clash, you know, kind of smash in front of it, uh, as though two people are are cheersing in the middle of it. Their beer frothing over. And as this is the Firebrook Inn, welcome. Enjoy your stay at Craghammer. Um, as you all walk, he, Cornelius, he grabs your arm. Mm-hmm. And he says, Right down there, my lad. We don't have much in the way of magic. But right down there is the lone magic shop that we have. They might have quite what you're looking for. Mm. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. He gives you a wink with his one good eye. Mm-hmm. He kind of strolls off whistling. <laughs> and you're not quite sure if he's if he's whistling or he's breathing, considering that he misses some teeth. So That's fair. <laughs> Even like an okay guy. You never know. It's not bad. Well, I guess we'll go in and, I mean, we're going to have a drink, right? I mean, it's um, obliga- Steve, obligatory. Steve, and Steve asked again, what, what ale would you suggest as our first pint at, fire, at, the, at the inn? Good sir. Oh, they're, uh, well, it's, uh, it's towards the end of their winter fest, but they might still have some of their winter brew. I definitely recommend a bit of that. Right on. It's, it's We're going in. Quite tasty. You, sir, have a good day. Aye. Thank you much. Again, welcome to Crag Hammer. He walks on by. Walks on by. So, y'all walk in. And upon um, entry in the Firebrook Inn, you push open uh, some heavy stone doors. Um, but as you open the doors, the, the sound of revelry and laughter 
and uh, just song and dance, it just just hits you right off the bat, as well as as the smell of just a a brew house. You know, you smell the yeast, you smell that this is a place where they make the stuff that you love to drink. It's not just shipped in. And so you smell the yeast, you smell, you smell everything about it, the rye, everything about it. Um, Big smile on Lloyd's face. Yep. Big smile on Lloyd. Absolutely. And there are people like it's, it is a revel, a revelry is the best way to put it. Like people are dancing on tables, having a good time. You see beers slashing around, um, not a bit of food to be seen. Everybody's just drinking and having a good time. Um, yeah, and you're welcome to the Firebrook Inn. Heck yeah. Well, you made it, boys. Um, we can Indeed. acquire some accommodations and drinks and things like that and make ourselves known with for Jatana, I guess. I don't know. Let's drink first, Jay. Yeah, what time of day is it? Are we like at, at the end of the day here? Oh, Tail judgment. end of the day. Here comes the yeah. judgment for Cornelius. Okay, never mind. It's a good time. <laughs> it is it is the tail end of the day. It took the better part of the day to to get up the up the mountain and uh following following Alan through the the uh the the streets and down the steps. It's probably a good eight, nine o'clock. Um is what it is, and you kind of feel like that. Probably that tracks with what uh, with the the parties that you're seeing going on here. That 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 time kind of tracks. So um, you walk like in, it. and a uh, a an elf girl in a which is kind of surprising in a dwarven capital, but a a full blown elf girl comes comes up to you and says, "Hi, welcome to the the Firebrook Inn. Um, would you like would you like a table?" Um, and she kind of, she kind of gives you a nod and points you to a table that's about the size for your party. Might be a little small for you, but um, with with Valandor and Cornelius, it's probably a pretty good size. She points over to there and, and uh, says, "You you can have that table over there. You might want to grab it before someone else does." We'll grab it straight away. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Will you be helping us this evening? Um, I am going to be making a trek. I will make sure that somebody comes and and sees you, though. I, I will make sure. And she uh, she kind of waves her finger towards the back and kind of points to the group. And uh, she gives you a little bit of a wink, Cornelius, and moves back on into the into the the crowd. Um, so shortly after after taking your seats at the table, uh, another individual does approach you. And uh, and actually uh, it takes your order. It's a halfling male, uh, looks about middle aged, uh, has some floppy, disheveled brown hair, uh, tan skin, kind of weathered uh, weathered skin, brown eyes, uh, has has brown and black clothes. Uh, he comes up very very jovially, has has a, has a big smile on his face. Oh, lads, welcome to the Firebrook Inn. My name my name's Bellamont. I'll be uh, I'll take it be taking your orders this fine evening. How are you? Doing great. Ah, great, great. May may I uh may I interest you in some of our finest ales we have on tap tonight? We have uh some of our seasonal fare at this time. We have our winter spice, our our frosted froth. They're going quick. They're going quick this evening, boys. I recommend that that you get the frosted froth if you have an opportunity. Cool. Sign me all up. All of those. All of those for seems for like our opportunity. We Two? want all of those. A winter spice and a frosted froth for you, my man. Oh yeah, both great, great. Make, uh, everyone make, else, make it three frosted, super frosted, <clears throat> right. frosted froth. Jenny Foods. Yeah, what's uh, uh, what's to eat? Uh, unfortunately, no, we don't. We don't. We don't serve food here. We Holy are connected shit. to a bakery on the other side, though. If you'd like a, a loaf of yes. bread or something. Oh, maybe. Ooh. Okay. Do I walk over okay. and grab that? Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, if you want to head right next door over there, I will go get you drinks. You yeah, we, right do have, over there. we do have the vittles from uh, Jutana as well. So. Yes, but I would love a nice, like, dwarven, fresh-fired loaf of bread. Maybe they could make us a sandwich or something with the bread. Who knows? 
uh, that I think that is something they could do. If not, they have some fine cheeses that you might have some bread and cheese to go with your ale as well. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're sold. We're going to do a lot of that. So Great. Welcome. Welcome. I'm so happy to see you. Let me go get your drinks, and I'll be right back. Again, name's Bellamont. See you in a bit. See you in a bit, Bellamont. Scuttles off into uh, into the back, kind of nudges himself through uh, through the rooms, uh, through the uh, through the individuals in the room. So, oh, uh, Lloyd wants to take a pee. He's got to go. Okay, so you uh, you wander around and kind of nose around, trying to ask, hey, hey, where where's the pisser in this joint? Yeah, and I'm they kind of lay of the land a little bit while I you know find the pisser. So. Absolutely, go ahead and make a uh, make a. Uh, I mean, is, is it a general, just in general type of a yeah, thing? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not looking for a fight per se. I'm just seeing who's around <laughs> and kind of the the makeup of the of the of the tables around us. Go ahead, make a uh, make a a perception check. Yes. Mm, yeah. My, Don't see my natural shit. one. Natural one. Wow. Oh uh, my it's god. Been a, it's been a long ass day for you, man. It's been a oh. long ass day. You haven't seen much of anything Here at the start of the day. Um, so, you yeah. you just really need a drink, and you really need to uh, really need to pull an Austin Powers and just leave <laughs> for about forty five seconds straight. Oh, um, and uh, that's about the extent of it. You just notice a lot of different people around you, and that's that's about it. My goal is to not piss in my pants at the end of the night, uh, given a recent song I heard. So that's my new goal. There you go. Uh, there's there a song, by the way. There's a song. Uh, I would like to get the cheese and bread, or cheese, or bread, All right. or cheese. So you head over. There is a uh, a a big wooden door that that is uh, is currently shut, um, but you see a sign over the top that says Coraline's Hops and Barley. And it has a picture of two cross loaves of bread underneath it. And you have a feeling that's that's what Bellamont was pointing you towards. So you go on in, and uh, you are suddenly hit with the smell of baked goods. A very similar smell to what uh, you sometimes would get hit with when walking into the kitchen. Oh. And if Jatana was in a baking mood rather than a cooking mood. Um, so it kind of takes you back a little bit, back to uh, back to Oman. Um and you walk in, and there is a a dwarf woman uh, sitting there kneading some dough uh, across the way. She's uh, uh, about average height for a dwarf, long reddish-brown hair braided behind her head, um, draped down over her left shoulder. Um, she, she hears the door open because suddenly there is a burst of noise that uh, you you understand why she looked up so quickly as you open the door because as, you, as soon as you shut it, it's almost silent. Um, so it was a, a sudden shock to her that, that the door was open. Um, and she... Uh, oh, hi! Hi, how are you? I'm Coraline. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Hops and Barley. Welcome to my Hops and Barley shop. Uh, what, what can I do for you? Oh, that smell was just absolutely amazing and i really wanted to get some bread and maybe some i don't know what do you have that's that's delicious because i just like the smell is just intoxicating well let me let me tell you what anyone who's brand new into my shop gets a free pastry here you go and she hands you um a croissant and uh says this is free on the house. It is a testament to what I make. Um, myself and Firebrook, uh, we share our recipes. And we share our ingredients for our recipes. And so um, you'll probably taste a little bit of what goes in here in the ale that you drink over there. Where it's, it's, it's a great connection that we have. That sounds amazing. So you're just looking for some uh, some loaves of bread. Would you like anything else? Some uh, some some muffins. Uh, you know, I have more of these croissants. What uh, what would you like? Can I get a? I mean, uh, can I get some bread, some muffins, and some croissants? Because yes, absolutely. How many lads are you serving? Uh, I got eight. I got. Eight, well, I'm sorry. I got uh, six friends, including myself. Six friends, Five? including yourself. Mm. Great. Would you would you like Brought some cheese for two? Some, okay. Some dried fruits, some, some like a like a whole platter type thing? Sure. All right, great. Let me see what I have. And she goes in the back. Um comes back out. She has like a, a wooden serving tray. Um 
a little bit of a cutting board type thing with a couple different loaves of bread and uh, some some dried dried figs and dried dates and a a wheel of of cheese right there with a, uh-huh. a big old knife sticking right in the middle of it. That this is uh, this this might treat you quite well. Uh, this is uh, this is basically the house special here. Um, it's it'll be ten silver. Perfect. Do we need two? No, I mean she knows we're feeding. Uh, that's why I asked for. An I know, extra but, dude, but platter. Oh, okay, fine. An extra piece yep. because you're fat, so we're good. Fine. Um. And I say that is an absolutely amazing price. And I hand her over the 10 silver. And because I want to thank her, I'll also slip her a gold piece and just say thank you for taking care of us. Damn, son, a gold? Yeah, but here's the thing. Yeah. One of the, th- the Okay, now this is just what I'm, what I'm going to say to the guys when I get back to the table. Since they share ingredients, they share recipes... This may be a good person to know, okay? I'm so I'm slipping her an extra gold piece just to be like, thank mm-hmm. you, I really appreciate it. We're going to be staying here for a while, and just thank you. Okay. Sounds reasonable. Good plan. Coraline, uh, investments. Coralin notices uh, on the uh, on the top of the the ten silver that you hand her the the shining gold piece, and she says. I thank you very much. Come on back anytime you would like. She gives you a little bit of a wink, and uh, and goes back to back to rolling her dough. Um, and uh, yeah, you have a a very nice looking set of uh, set of breads, dried fruits, and a big old wheel of cheese. Oh, with a knife excited. already in it. A, a fruit Love it. And, 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 and bites into it. Heartily enjoying the the fruit. I haven't even brought it over yet. I thought it was already at the table. You said no, it no. It's traversing. <laughs> I thank Coraline again, and I head back over to bring it to the table now. So our That's friend can Steve eat. <laughs> <laughs> at this point, Steve grabs the, grabs the dried fruit. Yes. You see, uh, see Lloyd makes it back as well after uh, eventually finding the bathroom. I washed. Great. He he actually with with a with a a roll of a perception he announces that rather loudly that he washed and <laughs> it's right when the music like lulls a little bit. Damn it! And everybody's like, "Huh?" Um, never mind. I sit down. Rec- record scratch. Grab my drink. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I mean, he didn't I, roll a nat one, so he deserves it. I put my hands yeah, on correct. every single item on the tray and like look it over, and then put it back down and say, "Oh, this looks nice. Looks really good." He, he wonders uh, aloud to the, uh, the group, saying, "I can't imagine all of this, um, all of the ingredients to make these things was brought up by goat. They must have other ways back into this into this stronghold." You think? I'm not too worried about it. I'm gonna drink my stuff and eat my stuff, and then you know we'll see what kind of work comes away. Yeah, I'm gonna eat and drink as well. But I mean, I would think that the dwarves, with everything that we've seen so far, can figure out a way to grow some of the stuff in here. This place is freaking huge. It doesn't grow up here. Mm. We're in the mountain, not high on the mountains. Right, we're in the middle of a mountain that goes down very far. Just pontificating alone. Which I does question how they got all the barley and the wheat and the things that they need for all this shit. But yeah, no. Not worried about that. I mean, you don't need sunlight to grow. You just need light to grow. And warmth. As, as you're talking about this, you notice that Belmont has, has reappeared with all the drinks that you have requested. Um, somehow he has carried them all himself, even though six of you have ordered two ales each, one of each, the frozen froth and the winter spice. Uh, he comes with all of them stacked in hand, wrapped up, and he just puts them down on the, on the table and presents them all out and says, slides each two to each of you and says, Welcome to the Firebrook Inn. 
very uh very happy to have you here and um let yeah, me tell me, you give him applause give him a little applause there i thank <laughs> you so much thank you so much if if you don't mind my saying, gents, and I I mean no ill here because I'm I'm really hoping to hear some things, but you look like you've taken your fair share of shellackins over the uh, over the course of time. <laughs> like, uh, and no offense, meaning you. My apologies, but but where, where do you, where do y'all hail from? Lloyd smells himself out of you know concern for you know. As a group, uh, we are coming on a long trip from Amman. Iman, that is a uh, that's a couple days journey, isn't it? That's why we may smell like horses' ass and goat's hooves. Nothing. I did not mention the smell. Trust me, I've smelled worse. There's there's uh there's plenty of folks here. You look around, you'll see see, see people that smell. You could you could see how they smell if you know what I mean. But um, no, I I just meant uh, you you probably have some stories to tell. Is what I'm saying. Like you've probably seen some things, haven't you? If you don't don't mind my asking, what's the craziest things either any of you have seen out there? Brought us like myself to a good story. This is pretty close to the craziest thing so far. Brought us like to Vondor and says, "This might be your time to shine." <clears throat> oh God! No, we. Oh, we thank you, brought us uh, a vat of molten cheese that was mm-hmm. the side of a house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we did. That was. Probably Didn't really so like that, but it was tasty. Probably worth That's writing a really song about. Mm, you give is. my friend a moment here, he would probably give you the greatest tale of all. Of more gold. Cheese, of how we survived the I I think I'd love to hear that. <laughs> I mean Me too. Well, <clears throat> uh, it does cost gold for our body to entertain. Yeah, he. All. he well, I mean, I don't. Do I don't need. I don't need it necessarily to begin with, but I think a little, uh, a little tale, kind of, um, you know, where we have it. And I'll just say this. I'll say a little rhyme off the top of my head. In a town so quaint, where the streets were paved with cheddar, a curious event, like nothing they'd ever seen. The cheese volcano erupted, gooey and divine, melting everything in its path like a savory sign. It kind of did do that, actually. <laughs> it yeah, did. Really. So, well, I mean, when I type oh. stuff in, it comes out well. Goodness. That, that, I will that. pimp out Valendor all day long. Oh, that the town. A dark turn. I did. It was rough. I mean, <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh, the town of melted dreams, covered in brie, a cheesy catastrophe, as far mm-hmm. as the eye can see. But amidst all the gooey mess, a hero takes a stand to save the town with courage and a cheese did we, plan. Did we save the town? I don't remember. No. We're trying to save the well, town. That's, oh. that's fascinating. So you, 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 didn't, you didn't fight monsters, but you fought a vat of cheese. Yeah. A molten cheese. That, that is a heck of a tale. I mean, you ask. I mean, we fought that's monsters, too, but the cheese one was the fun one. It was uh, pretty terrifying, actually, um, and we we got away from it. Not some people didn't. And that we was lost bad. some friends. Oh, I bet. And I bet this is not a good way to go for a future reference. Okay, well, good to know. Good to know. I've I've uh, I've 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 never experienced that myself, and I'll, I'll plan on not ex- ever experiencing it. Thank you for that. Yes, that's I great. <laughs> All right. Well, um, with that, oh, I. Uh, yeah, I, I see Allie's here. Um, so I, I'll I'll bid you adieu, and oh, uh, yeah. I'll I'll introduce you to uh, the lady of the house. Oh, um, uh, her her name's Var Allen. Uh, goes by the name of Allie. Allie, this uh, this this group of uh, of individuals have a heck of a couple stories to tell you. Let me tell you, and you see, um, an individual coming up to you. It's it's uh. Uh, half elf individual she is has long blonde uh like dirty blonde hair um in a an orange like a a, a burnt orange uh skirt kind of the uh a a blue um stash across her her chest um she's 
the in, the one individual that looks like a little bit out of place. Everybody here is, you know, a little bit tipsy and having a good time. Uh, she seems to be very well kept, and um, you know, she's not drinking at all. Basically, this is this is her joint, um, and she comes up and she says, "I joint, uh, gentlemen, I, I uh, welcome to the Firebrook Inn. My name is." Uh, Var Allen, uh, but you can you may call me Allie. Uh, welcome. What can I do you for? And we will end tonight's session a little bit later, but we'll end it there tonight. Woohoo! Nice. Made it. <clears throat> Bravo. I'm sure you planned for Jimmy. Brian, I did not plan for Jimmy, but I'm oh, super I... happy. <laughs> God, I'm so happy about Jimmy. Now mascot. The greatest things in D&D are not planned. Oh, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy. We'll see yeah, what he's yeah. like. I he did not make Jimmy, it. But I got Jimmy. You got Jimmy. Hey, it was only 20 gold mm-hmm. compared to the 35 everybody else is going to pay <laughs> if, their, if their shit makes it back. That's true. That's a, that's a deal on Jimmy. And I you get to Jimmy. keep him. Jimmy's not That's the true. donkey we wanted, but he is the one that we needed. <laughs> He's our the villain. one that you needed. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. That's Fact. True. Uh, gents, all right. Mm-hmm. Well, it's been a good night. I uh, I start my new job tomorrow, so I'm going to go hit the hey. hay. Uh, You're going to do yeah. good luck, B-Dog. Good luck. 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 Good luck.